The new Panasonic EV battery facility under construction in western Johnson County casts quite a shadow. Especially on this cluster of single-story structures known as Clearview City. No, it's not an old movie lot. People still live here. But the story starts during World War II. By 1942, the U.S. needed more firepower. And the Sunflower Ordnance Plant was built quickly outside DeSoto along the old K-10 to help address that. Unlike war production facilities in big cities, Sunflower's rural setting meant that places for employees to live were few and far between. The next year, Sunflower Village went up across the street. 852 housing units costing $2,800,000 was has been approved in Washington for workers whose task required them to live near their employment in the Sunflower Ordnance Plant between DeSoto and Eudora, Kansas. Sunflower Village wasn't just large. As company towns go, it was thoughtfully laid out. By hair and hair, the Kansas City landscape architects responsible for Loose Park and the grounds at the Nelson Atkins Museum. The structures themselves were basic, but they all had electricity and more amenities than at least some of the homes in DeSoto. This part that we're standing in now was called the Old Village and the buildings were made out of concrete block. They were, it really impacted DeSoto when they first built it because they didn't have the school's capacity. Daryl Zimmerman was in grade school during the war. When it ended, Sunflower's units were pressed right back into service as housing for veterans and their families, along with a surge of KU students. By the time Daryl hit high school, the Korean War put the plant back in action. 6,000 residents were served by a grocery store, retail shops, even a community center with a movie theater and a restaurant where Daryl ate often. In fact, he proposed to his wife Ruth in the parking lot outside it. It also had a bowling alley, and at least according to local legend, a certain seven-foot Jayhawk worked there as a pin setter, briefly. When the basketball coaches found out, they said, you can't work there. One of those bowling balls could hit you in the leg and break it, and then you wouldn't be able to play basketball, so they made him quit. <laughs> so far, it wasn't, it wasn't built to last. It was supposed to go away. It could have ended in 1959, when the government decided to get out of the housing business. A developer from Oklahoma bought it at auction. But the low rents he charged also brought an increase in crime and a decline in services. The next owner, Paul Hansen, made improvements and shifted the emphasis to senior living, changing the name to Clearview City in 1975. After he died in the Hyatt collapse, Clearview spent decades treading water at best. The ammo plant finally closed for good in 1992. Then in 2014, Clearview's current owner, David Rhodes, was able to get the property, warts and all, onto the National Register of Historic Places as a prime example of temporary housing that had overachieved. Now the Panasonic plant presents a new wrinkle, one that understandably makes residents of Clearview Village, as it's now called, wary. Though most weren't willing to talk on camera, 12-year resident Wanda Reidhart had lots to say about why she stays here. First off, it's affordable. It's amazing. It, it's really affordable. And then you got plenty of room. And the office uh, people are very nice. Actually, everybody around is really nice. Been here for seven years. Nice, peace and quiet. I come from a small town and just moved out to here. So I like it out here. Me and my wife both like it out here. I don't think there's any kind of threat right now. Like I said, the only thing we've heard is rumors. Because of all the construction, Daryl Zimmerman doesn't get out here much these days. There's plenty of history in these old homes, he says, and maybe something more. Well, we're always needing places for people to live. They might not be new, but they're pretty sturdy.